In line with a general mood of the country, Zimbabwean rugby too feels it could be on the threshold of something special. By Enoch Muchenjo qualifying for the World Cup in 2019, the first time Zimbabwe would have achieved the feat in more than two decades, is prime priority. There is much more. The new Zimbabwe Rugby Union's ERU executive headed by former international winger Aaron Yanni has promised sweeping reforms set to change Zim rugby forever, and hopes the recent political change in the country, if it ushers in the economic recovery year and can also boost rugby's cause. Yanni is known as a workaholic with a brilliant rugby brain, strategist and successful businessman in his own right. But none quite eloquently put across the vision of the new executive than the experienced administrator Los Nemdingwiza, one of the union's two vice presidents. A strong-willed individual who has been in the trenches of Zim rugby for a number of years, Mdingwiza has a previous term as a ZRU vice president, a position he held while still in his 20s. Later on the former Harare Sports Club player coach had two tenures as the national team's manager before his unceremonious departure in 2014 just before the Sables missed World Cup qualification by a whisker. But Mdingwisa has always longed for a comeback, driven by his conviction that given a position of influence again, he can use his knowledge of rugby and business acumen to turn around the fortunes of the game. The major plan is to commercialize rugby in this country, said Mdingwisa this week. This sport needs to turn professional. It's long overdue. Having been part of the hardworking and self-sacrificing backroom staff that almost took Zimbabwe to the World Cup in 2015, the nature of Emding was his fallout and eventual removal as Sable's manager hurt him a lot. But now in a more influential position alongside Yanni, to whom he was a running mate for last weekend's election, Emdingwiza has a wonderful opportunity to finally get it right in the quest for World Cup qualification. First of all, we must appoint a professional coach to work on time basis, he said. Someone who is well-respected. Someone who has coached a first-year nation. Big hint there, from Mdingwiza, that the next Sables coach will come from outside the country. Who is it going to be? I cannot answer that for now, replied Mdingwiza. First, we must put in place an appointments committee, which will then manage the appointment process. But what I can tell you is that we will create the environment for that coach to be able to operate. The money is there for the right people and the right product. There are people who are willing to support us if we create the right environment. We are looking for a coach who will be able to attract players who have played at the highest level in the world to come and play for Zimbabwe. In 2014, when Zimbabwe nearly qualified, the country had invited a number of top-class players from the diaspora who, lured by the magnet of the World Cup, answered their homeland's call and almost took the team to the promised land. I'm not talking here about people like Beast Springbok Prop 10 IM Tauriura and Australia International David Pocock who are, what do you call it in soccer? Cup tied, said Mdingwiza. We are looking at guys who haven't played for other countries but have played for Sharks, Cheetahs, Brumbies, Crusaders, that level. Those are the people we want to attract. With a foreign coach most likely to be appointed, there will also be a place in the new structure for former Zimbabwe captain Brendan Dawson, the coach when the Sables missed out on the 2015 World Cup ticket by a hair's breadth. From a continuity point of view, someone like Dazi will have to be involved. Emting Wiza said, even Cyprian Mandange, the immediate past coach. There is a place for everyone. We just need to work it out in such a way that there is no duplication of duties and no infighting. What particularly excites Mdingwiza is the level of goodwill all round and the pledges of support the new administration has received. The amount of interest it has generated, the phone calls, the number of people willing to help us, it's amazing, he said. That's why I can sit down here and tell you that we will find sponsorship for the National League, that we will transform the standard of play in the NRL and that we will get that league on television. We will also be big on development of the juniors. Zim Rugby is set to change forever. Indeed, already there have been early signs of that goodwill with Harare attorney firm Titan Law, which this year spearheaded the formation of a Sables Trust, the national side's welfare body, throwing its weight behind the new administration. Lawyer Gerald Malachwa, a devout rugby fan and son in law of the country's new president Emerson Manangagwa, takes over as the Sables Trust chairman. Colleen DeYoung, the former ZRU chief executive and executive committee member of Rugby Afrique, assumes the position of the Sevens Teams Committee. We will have various committees to help us restructure the union. Emting Wiza says, We will have a human resources consultant from a top-listed company coming to look at the structures. Results on the field, more than anything, will be the yardstick by which the new administration will be measured. And they have their work cut out.
Namibia and Kenya, who will be the biggest threat in the World Cup quest next year, looked miles ahead in the Africa Cup this past season. But Mdingwiza knows it and he can boldly declare that Zimbabwe can so easily overcome all its continental rivals if the people involved stop pressing the self-destruct button. We are already ahead of them, we have always been, argues Mdingwiza. We have just unorganized. We have not been doing things the right way. We must take our position, and the position has always been ahead of them. The only team that is our competition is Namibia. The other guys are not our competition. I'm not saying we don't respect them. We will respect them. But we have players playing at a much higher level than theirs. Namibia as well. They are not invincible. The difference is they've been professional playing in the Curry Cup and playing test games against sides the likes of Uruguay and Georgia, who are in the top 20 in the world or thereabout. But we can beat them. We have a bigger population and we have more players. We just need to tap into that. Passionate about his sport, no doubt, but then that fire has also been ending was his biggest undoing, constant clashes with players when he was the national sides manager, and the public fallout with the John Falkenbergold executive, which proved the final straw. The relationship is fantastic now. Emting Wiesa says, All players who accused me of things when I left have been phoning me, asking me to come back. That was the major reason I contested for this post. They realized I was not the problem. When I left, things got worse. Where rugby was when I was there and where rugby was when I left spoke volumes of my work. The new ZRU administration comes into office at the same time with a new minister of sports, Kazembe Kazembe, a former executive of the country's biggest football club, Dynamos. I think Kazembe Kazembe will do well, we wish him all the best, said Mdingwiza. He's the new kid on the block, so to speak. So are we. He's of energy, so are we. I think our combination will bring results. Having gone to Alan Wilson, I'm sure he knows the euphoria and camaraderie rugby brings. We are super excited. We can't wait to see him and put our plans across. As we spoke, Amding Wiza was running a bit late for a meeting with an icon of the global game, the great Kennedy Simba, who is currently back home in Harare. So we had to wrap it up. These are the kind of people who have been calling us saying, how can I help? He is in the World Rugby Hall of Fame. He's a busy guy, but he wants to help in any way he can. Why shouldn't we use guys like him, even as an ambassador? That's the kind of support we are being offered by people like Kennedy, exciting stuff to hear, but the real work begins now.